Alex Buhuna with MMA Mania. I'm here with Ty Rutula, who returns to action November 3rd for the inaugural one championship welterweight submission grappling title. Ty, how are you? Yes, sir. Doing great, man. I see you're growing in that beard. Perfect time for the winner. <laughs> yeah, things coming in solid. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's uh it is it is beard life all uh all day. Um it's a yes, little bit sir. right now, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I'll you always trim it later. <laughs> uh, man, you're uh, 16 days out. How are you feeling? Man, I'm feeling ready to go. Super excited. You know, of course, you know, I got a title fight. I've been asking for this fight for a little while. You know, my brother's got the belt. So to to be watching him fight for the belt, you know, all these times, I'm definitely super amped and uh, ready to go. Yeah, well, let's talk about that right off the jump, man. Uh, you know, we, we, we've all been wondering when you're going to get your shot. You've been asking for a title shot. Um, when they called you and said, you got it, you, you got your title fight. What, what was the emotion like? Right. I was super stoked and relieved. Of course, you know, uh, like I said, I've been going, you know, all over Asia for my brother and for myself as well, you know, but uh, all these flights, Kate's flying first class, you know, and I'm in the back of the plane, you know, so he'll switch every once in a while and you'll, you'll hook it up. But uh, no, I'm just really honored and, and grateful for the opportunity. You know, I've been wanting to, to represent one, you know, as a, as a, you know, a title holder and as a champion and uh, I'm ready, I'm doing everything in my power to make sure that I come out with the belt, you know, and that, uh, I do, you know what I'm supposed to. And for your first title fight, they don't give you some 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 chump. They 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 give you a really very good grappler, right? So like, do you did you like this like this challenge that they're throwing your way? Absolutely, you know. And I think a lot of even guys in the jiu-jitsu community aren't super um super reckon uh they don't know my opponent super well. But my opponent's super tough, you know. Uh, Magomed, yeah, I've, I've seen him watching a lot of his fights. I think he was uh, the last one, aside from my brother, to submit Mika Galvao Nogi. Um, you know, I think he may or may not have a win over Craig Jones. You know, he's very, he's got some notable wins, some great titles, and uh, he's a dog. He's a gamer, you know. So anytime I get to fight someone that's tough, I'm I'm ready to go. You know, I I live in the in the battle. You know, that's what I want, and uh, I'm I'm stoked, grateful that one got a good opponent for me, and. Uh, I'm ready to take him out onto the next. Yeah, I I believe your brother and even you said like you like the tough challenges. Like you don't want to fight chumps, right? Like you want to fight the best of the best to prove that you are the best. That's it, you know, and that's and that's what it's all about for my brother and I right now. We're in you know the prime of our careers. We're feeling you know the best we've ever felt, and I just want to keep fighting the best guys. You know, I'm super grateful to be in this position to do what I love and and you know to keep knocking out my goals with with these guys. I'm just, I'm super stoked, you know. So it's on. We're gonna we got we got Magomed. That's the next one, and uh, we're ready to go. When you look at this guy, do you see any? Obviously, you're not going to tell me, but like, do you see weaknesses in this guy or are you going in there to kind of like just do you? Uh, you know, what? Really, I see weaknesses with everyone, you know, to be honest, that I've seen in jujitsu. You know, my brother and I have been doing uh, jujitsu since we were three years old, potty trained. Like as soon as we were potty trained, you know, we were <laughs> on. So, you know, I, I see little windows with everybody, you know, somewhere. So and that's all I needed is a little window. And I know he doesn't make too many mistakes. Right. But I was uh, watching some footage and I know I'm going to be able to open them up and find a window. You know, that's what uh, that's what I'm going to have to do to stay sharp and apply myself. You're known for finishing your opponent. So are you going in there? Do you predict a finish? 100 percent. You know, that's always my goal, no matter what. So, you know, that's what the fans want to see. Right. That's what makes me feel good. You know, I remember uh, after my Rainier match. I remember leaving and I just didn't feel good about myself. You know, I just, I won and I, I didn't feel great, you know? And I remember that day I told myself I'd rather lose, you know, in the, the most exciting fashion possible, you know, than win like an, a, 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 a tight match. Right. And, uh, you know, and, and going, you know, into this next title match, you know, there's such big stakes. We got the title, right. The 185 one championship title, but I'm not even trying to think about that too much. You know, all I'm thinking about is, who I have in front of me and what I need to do, you know, and that's to submit them. So that's the plan. Awesome, man. Um, I did want to ask you, dude. Um, so I, I feel like, you know, a lot of people know how MMA fighters train, right? Like they do three days. If, if they don't have one big gym, they travel to three different boxing, jujitsu, wrestling, right. and then, you know, grapplers, like, you know, you, you, you go to your gym to do jujitsu, but for a professional grappler like yourself, 
what's a normal day like for you when you're in camp? Right. That, you know, that's a good question. My brother and I have never been uh, good guys to ask about schedule. You know, like we won't give you, we're, we're not the most uh, structured individuals, you know, uh, to say the least. But uh, what we do make sure we do is we work hard, you know, so whether I, I, I'm very into the mental, you know, that's my thing, you know, so if I feel like mentally I haven't done enough today, I'll I'll keep working. So if I got to train, if I feel like, OK, today I got enough jujitsu in, but I, I, didn't, I don't feel strong, you know, I go work out. So for me, it's whatever I'm feeling mentally in the moment. Sometimes I'm burnt out. I'm like, OK, I'm going to go surf instead, you know, so, you know, this last camp has been uh, filled, you know, with a lot of hard training, a lot of good scraps. And then I've been balancing it out with all the stuff that I like to do as well. So, yeah, it's just uh keeping the balance and making sure mentally that I'm prepared, you know, that's the worst feeling going to a fight unprepared, you know? So I never let myself be unprepared nowadays, you know? Mm, interesting. Well, thank you for answering that, man. Um, Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, obviously you fought two times this year. This gives me your third match this year. Um, You know, obviously th th this would be a better question for after your match uh, in November, but like, what would your outlook on this year look like? Yeah, you know what? This year uh, it was a little bit slow in the beginning for my brother and I. You know, the, compared to most years that we've had, and uh, and you know, not even complaining. There was a lot of stuff going on with our brother, with our brand. You know, that we were kind of trying to prioritize. And uh, but you know, maybe halfway through the year, I was starting to itch. You know, we're getting we're getting hungry to fight. You know, so I'm really excited to be taking on this match. You know, I'm all fired up. You know, after my last match, I wanted to fight the month after. You know, so I'm ready to go and. Uh, yeah, I'm stoked and grateful for the opportunity again. You know, it's on. We had a little bit of a slow year, but, uh, you know, the next six months, my brother and I were, were going hard. You know, I know he's looking to make his MMA debut, and uh, I'm looking to, this, to beat everyone I can around my weight and, you know, bigger. Yeah, so um, I just want to ask you some questions outside of your upcoming match. Um, are you still planning on converting to to to, to MMA, or or is that just kind of, are you, is, is your brother focusing on that right now? Yeah, we've both had MMA in our hearts, you know, for a long time. But uh, Kate, I could tell, like, by December, he's ready to go, you know. And uh, he's been training a lot more of it. You know, I could tell this all day long. Where he's like, he's, you know, we're, we're scrapping with each other. You know, he's he's ready to go. And uh, I'm going to let him do the debut first, you know, and, and see how that goes, right? If he smashes, if he does good, then it's on, right? And then uh, I'll let that kind of, you know, be the test. I'll let him be the test dummy. But no, I got all the confidence, you know. I think he's going to do amazing. You know, he's he's lethal, you know. We both grow up fighting each other every day, you know, so we're pretty tough, you know. So, yeah, that's on. So he's going to be the Rutolo guinea pig, as as, as one might say. That would be the, yeah, that would be the best. Uh, <laughs> I'll let him be the guinea pig. If all look good, if all goes as planned, then it, yeah, I'll go through. <laughs> it's on. Awesome. Awesome. Um, are you, are you planning to compete at ADCC? Yes, sir. I, I do plan on doing ADCC. I don't know if I'm going to do uh, the 77 kilogram division. I saw my brother one last year, or if I'll do uh 88, which is the one that I uh, entered last year as well, but I'm still, we're still going over it, but I think I'm going to enter ADCC. That's a big comp. So uh, you can go out there and, and show up. Awesome. Awesome. And then, um, uh, obviously a prominent grappler, uh, I, you know, he used to be a prominent grappler, but now he's kind of known for talking on the internet a lot, but Dylan Dan has just had a boxing match. Uh, did you catch that? I, I didn't watch the match, but I, I was watching some of it. Yeah. I know there was a lot of, uh, a lot of heat going into it. <laughs> I mean, do, do you think Dylan should just come back to grappling and kind of like, you know, fuck off with boxing or like, what's up? You know what? Uh, I think he probably made the most money he's ever made, right? Like boxing Logan Paul, you know. So to each their own, you know. I'm not. I. I don't. I don't. It's not up to me what I care he does with his career, you know. But I think you know what. Uh, in jujitsu, he's got good wrestling, and he always had a good game. You know, to be honest with you, he was always a gamer. Even if he wasn't the best, he was always a gamer. You know, and uh, I don't. How old is Dylan Danis now? Do you know? I don't know. I think he's, he's starting like to. Yeah, like early 30s, I believe. Right, he's starting to get so you know he for sure has got some time to come back to jiu-jitsu. That's what he wants to do. But I say he's making money doing the boxing. You know, he's getting more eyes on him than he's ever had before. You know, so I think what he's is, is doing, what he's doing is working for him for sure. You know, so respect to what he's doing. You know, it's working for him. You know, do I think he'll have a better chance? You know, coming back to jiu-jitsu, winning some title. You know, and like yeah, if he wants to gain some respect from the jiu-jitsu community, yes, but. 
you know, like who, to him, he probably doesn't care. You know, <laughs> he doesn't, he's killing it right now, you know, so teach their own. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, Gordon Ryan, uh, I, I feel like you and him, like there's this, there's this match in the making that like, it's going to be a fucking super, super grappling match when it happens. Do you see that happening, happening sooner than later? A hundred percent. You know, I keep asking for the match. I want it really bad. You know, and I'm not worried about me not having it now because I know the longer, you know, it, it takes, the more prepared I'm going to be, the bigger I'm going to get. And uh, quite frankly, the older he's going to get and probably the, the less good his steroids are going to work. Right. So, <laughs> you know, that's usually how it goes over time. They don't work better, you know, so I'm in no rush. But at the same time, uh, I, I want to fight him for sure. You know, I believe I have all the tools to uh I don't think he's going to give me something that I don't see coming, you know, and uh, obviously there's a big size difference there. Um, but if you look at, you know, the last ever since I was a 16 year old blue belt, I've never been submitted, you know, in a jiu-jitsu match, you know. And uh, so even at the matches I've lost maybe by a couple points, I was still like gassing the guy out ready to go. You know what I mean? I was ready to go another 20, 30. So even if, you know, the first 10 minutes of the match doesn't go my way, I'm confident he's not going to sub me and I'm going to I'm going to get to where I need to go. You know, so I want the match as soon as possible. But when it happens, you know, everything happens for a reason. So I'm ready for it. Whatever so happens. If, if you were to grapple tomorrow, do you feel confident you would beat Gordon Ryan? I 100% feel like I have the capability of it, you know, no matter what. You know? And even if if it wasn't, even if it wasn't tomorrow, give me at least one month, you know, one month, two months. It's just a different camp than Magomed, right? It's a lot bigger guy, you know, a lot different opponent. But I'm ready for Gordon. You know, he's been in the back of my mind, not really living there. You know, I don't worry, worry about him throughout the days. But he's definitely the one that I want to beat, you know. In jiu-jitsu, you want to beat the best if you got to be the best, right? So he's been on my list a while, you know. And obviously, he's a lot bigger. And that's why I've been lifting weights. You know, I've been changing my lifestyle a bit to, you know, I have to, to be able to beat these guys, right? So it's on, you know. I'm doing what I can, and and I'm going to do my best. I I ask about I ask about you guys to him. Every time I see him, I ask about, the, about you and your brother. And I feel like... He acknowledges you guys, but he doesn't really one up you guys. He doesn't give you like your, your guys that. praise. Like, do, do you feel yeah. that way? No, a hundred percent. But at the end of the day, he doesn't really give anyone respect, you know. So <laughs> yeah, so that's what you gotta look at, you know. I like one of the main things I noticed. I'm like, man, you don't have too much nice things to say about people, <laughs> you know. <laughs> to be honest, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, he wants to call out like Luke, uh, like my teammate Lucas Barbosa, you know, or he wants to call out. Uh, he wants to call a lot of guys, you know, that I've beaten already, you know, or even like if you look at my match with Pedro, I submitted him a lot faster than Gordon did, you know. In all reality, I think Gordon's matches, you know, in the most, I'm not even trying to be disrespectful, this facts over feeling type of manner. I don't feel like there's a whole lot of like a technical evolution. You know, I feel like he's fighting guys a little bit smaller than him and he's using his weight. He's kind of laying on top of him. And I'm not seeing a lot of like dynamic technical move, you know what I mean? So yeah, to each their own. I just think that I'm going to be able to find my windows, you know, I'm ready to go. Awesome. Awesome. And then final, my, my last two things I want to ask you, man. Um, uh, how does, how do you think grappling will break through to the mainstream audience? Obviously it's big in one championship and, and one championship has a hardcore audience. You the UFC fight pass. It's trying to get eyeballs, but like not, only only hardcore grappling fans watch that shit so like how do you get like how is it like do you implement combat jujitsu do you implement like these overtime rules like how it, how would you do it like how would you get jujitsu to break through to break through you know i think you know with one we have a lot of hope and opportunity right now for jujitsu to be breaking through grounds we've never seen before right we have a, a platform and a promotion that jujitsu's never been on on that level you know, and that's why I'm so excited to become a champ for one, you know, because we're, we're fighting, you know, the feeling you get walking out the tunnel, you know, in the Lumpini Stadium at one, where you, like, you feel it so deep in your bones, you know, it's not even the, the biggest stadium, but you feel the crowd, you know, and it's all the, the amazing places that one takes you to go compete. Like, I think really that's what, uh what's going to help elevate the sport right now, you know, one's jujitsu side of things is still uh, relatively new, right? We're still, you know, creating, you know, that whole side of, of the, of the branch. So 
I think it's we still have a lot of the community still at Flow Grappling. We have a lot of the community still, you know, not hasn't quite made its way over to one, you know. But uh, I hope, you know, with my brother and I being champs and representing one, you know, we can bring over a lot of the community that, you know, where we were champions from, you know, before. And, uh, you know, one has the ability to blow jujitsu like it's never been, you know, blown up before. 100%. You know, there's just, there's more money. There's more, there's more everything. There's more, uh, there's more opportunity, you know, so I'm really stoked and grateful and happy where jiu-jitsu is at right now. Super yeah. stoked. You know, my brother and I are building our, our gym, you know, our lives, like it's the perfect timing. So, yeah. I started, I started grappling, uh, I, I started doing jiu-jitsu like almost, like almost five months ago and oh, just, me, just me doing it, it's a whole new respect and it's fun to watch now. Like now, now that I know that what right. I'm watching, it's so fun. For sure. And that's the thing. Like, there's so many guys that, you know, never really given it a chance. And, you know, and I completely understand. Like, if I didn't do jiu-jitsu and I'm watching some of these matches, it just looks like they're in 50 fit. I'm like, what is this? You know, that's not a, a sport, right? But, you know, you start training, you understand the technical aspects of it. And it's an amazing sport. You know, I say it all the time. Like, in, in Muay Thai, you know, there's only so many common eight. There's, like, an elbow. There's cooks. There's only so many. Like, there's thousands of techniques in jiu-jitsu, you know? And that's what I think makes so many people fall in love with it every day like you don't have to be a competitor to to like it you know like you can show up to class every day learn something new and then boom like your day you feel satisfied you know and good about it that's what it's all about you know i think that's why it's such a good lifestyle and finally uh you haven't lost a lot but there are there are a few a few a few blemishes on your record if, if you could rematch one person next who would it be next one would be marigali for sure that's the one that I'm super salty about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> super salty. I'll be honest, you know. I remember that fight after, too. He had said some little shit like, oh, I got to give you some Darce tips or something, you know. I was like, oh, fuck. It's on <laughs> next time I see him. You know, Marigal is one that uh, I have respect for him because he was a gi guy and he went to Nogi, right? So he wasn't always – I'm sure he probably trained some Nogi before, but I give him respect for the conversion and – uh but yeah, I just want that match back more than anything. You know, I feel like he he believes he's at the top. And if he thinks he's better than me, you know, I think he knows he's not, you know, in the match, <laughs> the match we had, he knows he's not, you know, he was curling at the end, you know, and I was still ready to go. So, you know, that's the match I want back next. You know, I actually fought with like, multiple torn ligaments for my first, the match before that too. So none of my double legs were working, you know, I, yeah, not to make excuses, but a hundred percent with two good legs, you know, and just another opportunity. I'm taking them down. So if you're watching this, Margali, I'm looking for you, doggy. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Ty, thank yeah. you so much for your time, man. I really appreciate it. Um, If you want to plug your social media, plug any sponsors you might have, you want to thank anybody, the floor is all yours. Right on. Just thank you to everyone that supports me. You know, mainly my mom and my dad, my biggest supporters since I was, you know, forever, you know, since I was a baby, obviously. And, uh, now, everyone around me, my manager, Sean Ward, she set up this interview and pretty much everything else in my life. You know, so I appreciate the structure and all my sponsors, you know, uh, PM Tenori, Chef Ipono, uh, Bear Show Your I got the best team around me right now. So I'm just super grateful where I'm at and happy. Thank you to everyone.